it's time for the last planned manufacturer of the free fly. RSI embodied the idea of taking a hull and adapting it to achieve multiple different purposes. That being said, let's start with one of their specialist ships. The Mantis specializes in intercepting ships and preventing their escape. Its primary system is a QED, a quantum enforcement device, capable of pulling ships from quantum and preventing them from entering it. It opens up all sorts of gameplay opportunities. Pirates teaming up the Mantis with a ship with an EMP on lucrative trade routes, or bounty hunters using valuable bait to lure their play and employing a Mantis to prevent their escape. RSI Single Seat Aurora comes in five different flavours, although only the CL has cargo space, all variants have modelled interiors, so they can at least do delivery missions. The CL or Clipper is a dedicated cargo runner, the Legionnaire or LN is the light fighter with an enhanced missile payload. The ES is a beginner ship, so if you're feeling like you might buy a pop game package, I'd probably start there. The Deluxe LX has a more luxury interior for all of your touring needs, and the Mark or the MR is a cargo fighter hybrid. The Constellations make great multi-purpose ships. With room for four crew, both the Aquila and the Andromeda have room for a vehicle in their hold. These ships are my go-to. I have one of these and whether I'm trading, whether I'm just moving from A to B, um, whether I'm exploring, the Constellation is my go-to. The Andromeda variant balances firepower and utility. Two man turrets, an impressive number of missiles, room for a vehicle in the cargo bay, and it even has a snub fighter docked to the tail, although, those words again, you can't actually undock it at the moment, that functionality is not yet in the game. The Aquila is slightly different, it's a long range exploration vessel. It sacrifices one of those man turrets for an enhanced sensor array, and comes with an Ursa Rover vehicle as standard. The Phoenix converts the humble Connie into a VIP transport vessel. The midsection is expanded and sacrifices much of the cargo space seen in the previous two for a whole bunch of bedrooms, a lounge, bar, dining area and even a jacuzzi. Oh and it's got fish tanks. L lots and lots of fish tanks. The Asa Rover is a sealed ground vehicle, with a remote turret, two crew positions and four passenger seats in the back. It looks really rugged and has room for four SEU of cargo. If you grab a Connie to rent today as part of the free fly, I really would recommend you get one of these and have a go at loading it up in the vehicle bay, flying it around and then exploring with it. It really does change the experience of flying to new planets. I'm going to take a guess and say I think that the Polaris is probably the most anticipated ship in this lineup, but you're not going to see it to fly today, although it will be down on the hollow view as I should imagine. The Polaris is a Corvette that looks really punchy and sleek. It's a new vessel in terms of game law uh, that will fulfil a bunch of tactical roles. It can operate for, away from base for long periods of time and carries a crew of up to 14. It has size 10 torpedo tubes missile racks, a bunch of torpedoes, and even carries a fighter in a hangar on top. That hangar has repair and refuel and rearm abilities, and inside we're expecting game areas like a medical blade, an armory, and a brig. Expect this to be a sort of flagship for militias or patrols, as well as a component part of larger fleets. The Orion is the largest mining ship currently planned for Star Citizen. The seven crew will be able to use tractor beams to pull rocks and minerals closer before the turreted mining lasers get to work. The idea is that all those minerals will be transported down a conveyor belt sort of system through the centre of the ship to the refinery where they'll be sorted out and put into storage. The 300 or so SCU of cargo noted on the ship's detail page doesn't count the room in that storage, so this thing is going to be able to take a serious level of cargo. But it's so big it won't be able to land on planets. Don't underestimate the scale, 
These pictures do not do the size of this thing justice. The Apollo is a medical rescue vessel, with the triage acting as a court sort of um, larger ambulance, and the medevac for more combat, more pressurised situations. Both of them have two rooms dedicated to medical kit, and the more involved the beds, the more specialised and the more amount of wounds they can treat, the less beds they can carry. So controlling one of these will be about selecting the right medical equipment for the job. Each will have two crew, the triage will have just a point defence turret, the medevac will have a turret with better weapons and also a number of missiles. They're able to get away with such low crew because they'll carry medical drones. Now these things, as well as going out and recovering people from deep space in a protective atmosphere, will also be able to use as a sort of floating stretcher and their look really lends itself to that. This is just another example of how the gameplay is going to be so much more involved um, and search and rescue will actually become a valid profession in this game. Keep an eye out over the weekend for some videos that are going to be a little bit different. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.